Hey everybody, welcome to Contra Thoughts. We've got Rittenhouse trial hot button right now. All right, so Kyle Rittenhouse cleared of all counts. It's four counts, five counts of, um, honestly, it's so politicized and so crazy. I've not really paid too much attention. Um, I'm just kind of looking at it from an arm's length, a distance. But a few things I want to look at. First and foremost, I want to say that he uh, had gobs of video. And there was already video that was hidden at one point, but then was revealed. Like, oh, actually, oh, yeah, we have this video too. I think it was the FBI who had this. And that's one thing. That's a big strike against the... Uh, prosecutors, because they want this to happen. Well, the funny thing is, you know, Rittenhouse not only was not a white supremacist, though people said he was, not only did they say he crossed state lines to go kill people, well, that didn't happen. Not only did he say that, you know, he's an active shooter, that wasn't the case. Vigilante, that's not the case. Like, on and on, just the lies. And that's what I want to point out. I want to drag the culture's feet to the fire and shove it in the truth, the, the fire of truth, the Bible, the Word of God, and just reality in general. This is not acceptable at all to slander people. They did this with Nick Sandman, with the, if you remember the guy with the MAGA hat a few years ago, and saying he's a white supremacist and this and that, he's horrible, this, where are the parents, where are these? And it's just, they slander these people. And Sandman, thankfully, got a massive uh, lawsuit uh, winnings for the slander that was he endured uh, by the mainstream media. Well, hopefully, hopefully Rittenhouse will do something similar. I would encourage him if he were asking me to pursue similar um, efforts. Anyway, a couple things. This will be a short video. I want us to rejoice and be thankful that justice is served. Just like with um, the uh, Derek Chauvin case and many other cases, O.J. Simpson way back when, any case, Justice isn't perfect in the courtroom, right? It's, it's, there's an eternal judge that we need to remember, right? That we'll all answer to. We should be thankful that at least there's impartial. They're trying to be impartial. They're trying not to let things say, well, this is political, therefore I'm going to judge this way. No, this is not guilty. I mean, this, there was multiple video clips, different angles. I mean, it was a self-defense case open and shut. Like I said, I haven't actually covered it at all um, just because of time and I've just been kind of an arm's length away because I haven't really been paying attention. But remember last year, right? Kenosha's burning. All these places are on fire through rioting. Nobody's held accountable. It doesn't seem like. And that yet you have criminals, one of which the guy who was killed was a wicked, wicked person, a uh, child molester and all the rest. And sure, should he have gotten killed in that way? No, he shouldn't have. He should have faced justice just like this. Now he's facing eternal justice. But the thing that I want us to consider is the people in Big Eva, in the church in general, and I want us to watch their reactions. Look at their reactions. Russell Moore, uh, Gospel Coalition, those types of guys. Uh, David Platt. Are they really concerned about justice? Or are they only concerned about a certain type of justice? It's easy to say, oh, justice, God's justice, this is justice, God's a just God, on and on and on. Yet, what are they talking about? Are they going to rejoice that Kyle Rittenhouse is found innocent and or at least justice is served? Because this is still justice, right? Because it would be unjust to send an innocent man to prison, wouldn't it? Right? We have a little bit of that in the scripture, do we not? We have multiple passages that talk about judging impartially. We have to know that. We have to rejoice and be thankful. We still have a system that still works, though it's imperfect, for a young man who's 17, no less. He's not even 18. I mean, he might be 18 now, but he was 17 when he committed these heinous crimes. Murder is heinous, right? But he wasn't there to intentionally do that, and that's the slander that was being painted. We shouldn't bear false witness. We shouldn't go against these things at all. Ecclesiastes talks about justice, of course, Habakkuk, the Psalms, Job, Job 8.3 particularly. Does God pervert justice? Does the Almighty pervert what is right? Does God twist it? That's the question. We want to, we should be thankful that we have 
an eternal judge, right? We always think judging, that's always a bad thing. Well, you want to have a judge who knows everything, who knows all the ins and outs. Oftentimes you see that in the scripture and you think, well, judging, judging, oh, it's bad, it's bad. It's not always bad. What's bad is when you have a corrupt judge. And if you're innocent, (laughs) uh, that's bad, right? But we don't like judging. We don't like judging. Nobody likes it. But we need to have a better perspective, especially as believers. So we can rejoice that Rittenhouse had justice. Uh, Here's a brief video from his lawyer. Listen. He has to get on with his life the best he can. I think eventually some anonymity will come back to it. Um, I don't think he'll continue to live in this area. Um, I think it's too dangerous. He's had 24-hour security since this happened. We're thankful that the judge protected his address. Um, Everybody in this case, and when I say that, I mean prosecution, defense, To me, it's scary how many death threats we've had. You know, I was answering my phone on the way back from court in Kenosha. I don't, my office isn't that far. After the third death threat, I quit answering the phone. So, death threats, right? Because that's the thing. The alternative is mob rule. The alternative is the people, like we see in Acts, for example, creating a riot and screaming, great is Artemis of the Ephesians, just chanting, because Paul and Barnabas are there preaching, causing a riot, but they're actually the people rioting, and they're chanting, yelling, I want this, I want this, like babies, like toddlers, little children, screaming. Oh, I'm gonna kill you, and this is his lawyer. I'm gonna kill you, I'm gonna kill you, the jurors. I mean, it was an MSNBC or an NBC, whatever it was, person following the van that was taking the jurors, because they're not just, you know, walking outside and out in the courtyard, uh, the courtroom, um, courthouse, courthouse's parking lot, right? They're driving from hiding, you know, their faces probably doing whatever. I mean, I couldn't imagine. And imagine this, this man, this kid, kills people, two people, in uh, um, self-defense. The videos are clear. Yet nobody wanted to say that. They want to slander him because it's all about clicks. It's all about numbers. It's all about sensation. He's a white supremacist. He's this, that, that. And then justice is served. He's innocent because, well, it's obvious that he's innocent, especially if you paid attention. And yet people are still no death threats because they want a narrative. Well, we don't serve a God who has a narrative. Okay. We don't serve a God who's partial or makes distinctions or shows partiality. And we can rejoice in that. So again, I encourage you, if you don't know Christ, if you don't have your sins washed away and given new life in him, bow the knee, turn to him. Because you do have a judge. I mean, you might not commit a crime, as it were, like Rittenhouse did, or anybody else, O.J. Simpson, whoever, right? Charles Manson, Jeffrey Dahmer, but we're all still guilty of our sin. And we need to either pay for our own sin or accept the free gift, the the plea bargain of eternal life in Christ. The one who suffered and died on the cross, but was resurrected to eternal life. I hope this finds you well. Um, Go ahead and like and subscribe if you haven't already. I appreciate it. And um, yeah, until next time, be against the world for the sake of the world.